Hello everybody, I'm Serta and welcome back to Planet Crafter 1.0. Well, in the last episode, uh, we managed to get quite a lot done on the base. I've added a little bit more between episodes, so things are looking pretty strong. There are a few things that I'd like to do in this episode. Uh, one of them is going out and actually having a good look at those rainbow caves, which I haven't been able to do yet. But before I do that, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's joined me, all the new subscribers, much appreciated. Thank you for your support and for all the people commenting and likes and all of that. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. But yeah, we got a lot to get into today, so let's get stuck in. Another one of the things I'd like to do today is get trading set up. Uncommon lava. I think I'll grab those. Yeah, trading is quite an important part of the game because you can pick up a lot of blueprints and extra bits and pieces that you don't find in any of the chests or in your normal blueprints so let's take a quick run through the base and see what we've got all right i have moved the screens over to this side and uh we're, we're doing pretty well um oxygen is doing very well now uh heat pressure biomass yeah I could probably push that a little bit more uh, i do have the tier two tree spreaders which i don't think i've put any in yet so i'll have to get to that and we did get a message that i forgot to read after months of hard work, I finally managed to find my way into the Sentinel unlocking process and unlock the space trading rocket on your system. Well, thank you. Usually terraformers are not able to use this, but it should help you. Chances of surviving are greatly improved when it's activated, but Sentinel almost never allows this for planet crafters. I have no way to tell if you're alive or not. If only we could see each other again. Again? Oh, Riley, okay. Now, another thing you might notice in this message screen, there are sort of two tabs. The second one is a record of all the messages that you've read on uh, your wrecks or bunkers or wherever you found them. So that's that's something to bear in mind. And it's actually something I didn't even realize until until somebody mentioned it in the comments. So, yeah, handy info that. Also, uh, not to forget, there are these coordinates that I need to get to at some point. I will get there at some point. I've also put up this interface, which uh, shows the rockets. So we've got four seed spreaders, three asteroids, six magnetic field rockets, and five plant rockets, and then the T1 GPS satellite. So yeah, we'll, imp we'll increase that a little bit uh, as time goes by. I'm not going to rush on rockets this time around. Anyway, let me get my health. Oh, yes, also, uh, we have good food. I'm not even sure if I showed this in the last episode, but come over here, grab some honey. Take the honey up. Uh, we're just going to go and put it in to the bio lab and boom. Now, eventually, we're going to automate that. So, yeah, this is the second floor. This is where I have auto crafters set up and I've built a few more. So, this one will be fertilizer two, then probably explosives and food and plastic and whatnot. So, that, that'll all come in and then this will be the, the mutagens down on this side. But yeah, this is where we are at the moment. Still a bit of space to fill up. And I haven't moved the biodomes across yet, but I will do that. Eventually, once I've got farms, this will be broken down as well. But right, it's early in the morning. I am popping over to Paradise Valley, which is becoming more and more overgrown. It's amazing. Going past the Uranium Cave, around this corner, and we are going into the Rainbow Caves. So I've picked up all the pulsars already. I, oh, I actually didn't get all of them. There's another. Yeah, keep your eyes open. Hang on. I'm almost sure I got that one. Did these things respawn or something, or did I just completely miss them? Oh, whatever happened, I'm not going to fight it off. All right, so I've already found this chest, but I think I'll just grab everything that's in it. All right, well, I'm not sure, but I think I've got everything now. Uh, if we head through... Oh, I saw another color somewhere. There it is. Right, so we have a a different one. This is Magnetar Quartz, and I'm I'm just going to grab as much as I can. Okay, I think I found everything. So let's move on. And we go up this narrow little corridor. It's really cool. There's another one over there. Okay, this is a dead end, so we have to go this way. Okay, oh, wow, nice. Uh, Belzar. Now... I have played many, many hours of this game. This area is completely new. It is amazing. Now, before, you could only get these uh, in the portal areas, these quartzes. And I have been told by someone in the comments that, unfortunately, you can't mine them here. So 
Oh, that's one of those things. All right, I'll come up there last. But it looks like I'm already full. Oh, and there's a chest. What have we got here? Okay. Um, some really good stuff. Oh, gosh. Okay. I'm actually going to head back. Let's see where this ramp takes us. Okay, it does take takes us to the top. And we are having a storm. Uh, just building a quick container to offload the extra stuff that we've picked up. So we've got the Belzar and the Magnetar. And then I'll offload... Um, actually, I want to take that aluminium out to the Super Alloy Cave. All right, so another thing that you'll notice is uh, if you look at the oxygen at the bottom, uh, bottom left, it says minus 0.3 per second. I'm using less and less oxygen, so it's becoming less and less of a stress, which means that we must be very close to a breathable atmosphere. So once that uh, reaches zero or it'll show an infinity sign, means that we will be at breathable atmosphere, which is great. All right, aluminium has been dropped off. Oh, good. We have another super alloy rod. Excellent. Back out to the rainbow caves. Here we are. And uh, there's there's a few more pieces of the Belzar that I can pick up. Oh, a chest. Ooh, blueprint market chip. Yeah, handy, handy, ha very handy. Oh, gosh, everything's handy. I'm going to run out of space again. I don't want to have to come back here too often uh, because it's a bit of a long trip. But yeah, one more piece and then we'll move on. Oh, and there's yellow stuff. And here we have solar quartz. Now, I'm, I think they're five different quartzes. Okay, I'm starting to fill up again. Uh, so I assume there's one more to find. So I will have to just pop my head out there. There are a few solar quartzes left, but I want to collect a little bit of each of them. Is that it? This is another Belzar cave. Okay. And it brings you out onto a ledge and there's a chest over there. Oh, here we go. This is a new one. Quasar. All right. Well, I'll fill my storage up with these. There's there's lots of blue chests out here. So at some point, I'm going to have to come out and check them out. But at least I've got some of each of these. And I know that there's a use case uh, in our crafting station for the different types of quartz. And we don't have to go in the portals initially to get them. Pretty cool. And my inventory is full. So let's head out this way and see where it takes us. Oh, wow. This is pretty cool. Um, while we're here, let's head this way. I see waterfalls, and this might be the other new biome. Well, there's more stuff here. Oh, wow, it's another pulsar cave. And there are quite a few pulsars in here as well, so that's something to bear in mind. All right, let's, uh, let's go up this little hill over here and see what we've got. Oh, wow, this is pretty. All right, let's see if we can find anything unique here. The reason for the existence of this biome or maybe it's just here to look pretty okay there's a chest not gonna open it yet wow it does look pretty though really nice and then this would be the edge of the map and there's a chest over there as well and we're gonna have a storm just a dust storm it takes away from the prettiness this is stunning anyway i'll probably explore between episodes and if there's anything very cool then i will share it with you guys but i need to get back now all right so i have offloaded a little uh let's go and unlock this chip and uh pinning tier three my word okay that just means that you're able to pin recipes if you have it equipped so another thing i need to correct somebody mentioned in the comments that i hadn't read the message on the on the computer screen in the ring because uh yeah i, I was running out of food or something or water yeah, I, I uh, forgot to actually drink the water and instead put it into a chest. So, yeah, I got distracted and I never read that message. So I'm going to pop back and go and read it quickly. Today was the inauguration of the Space Warp Gate. It took two years to build and was to finally allow us to easily cross the Ezekiel Prime sector. But as soon as we turned it on, the main power reactor, everything went wrong. The power immediately went down, all the reactors and stabilizers broke, and within a few minutes... And the spaceship was inexplicably drawn to the closest planet. We've tried everything to fix it, but it seems there's nothing we can do. The whole crew escaped into escape pods, and I sent a distress signal. I'm going to my pod now, too. What a waste. All of these months of work will be lost. I can't understand what happened. This shouldn't have happened. All right, so that's that. Oh, while we're here, 
I, I do. I have upgraded my deconstruct chip, so we should be able to deconstruct the servers and pick up some circuit boards. That's our first circuit boards, which is nice. Those will be very important, especially when it gets to the automation stage. While we're here, I'm also going to just do a quick run through of this uh, canyon area. There are things here that are pretty important. I'm going to start off with... Uh, there's a cave along this side, just around this little corner. And this is an iridium cave. Now, there's not enough... There's not a lot of space in it, but you can get a few extractors around here. They, they can... You can even put some of them just outside the cave and they will work. So that's something to bear in mind. Uh, there's all these vines. I just noticed this. Uh, it's another one of these special flowers, the arama. Oh, now the back end of this has changed. That waterfall wasn't there before. Oh, wait, I'm getting distracted. Okay, so there's this little pile of rocks. There's this column behind this column. There's a golden chest. And we'll just grab everything from that. Uh, right, for now. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Uh, oh, and there's a vine up there as well, so you can actually get to the new biome. Okay, good. Anything behind these falls? No, it doesn't look like it. We can climb up and boom, we're in the the new biome. I'm not sure what this biome's called, but it's got lots of waterfalls. We already have a waterfall biome, so we can't use that one. Right, and here we have a chest. Uh, fair stuff. And if we check the rack, there is another little chest uh, over here. Oh, can I get... There it is. Blueprint. Yeah, no, it would be easier if you got here before the water came up, but yeah, there we are. Uh, there's a few more chests around this area, like that. Oxygen multiplier, Ooh, very nice, very nice. And of course, uh, super alloy rod. So that means more extractors, more autocrafters. There are a few more. Oh, and there's a, there's a dive cave through here that goes into, comes out around the back of the labyrinth. And uh, all over the place, you'll find these vines. And these vines will help you get to the, the plateaus at the top of the canyon. And, well, this one doesn't really seem to have much. Oh, there we go. There's a pond and there's some zeolite, which I will take. I see over there, there's a flower, one of the rare flowers. There's more zeolites over there. So yeah, you can explore the tops of all of these and you'll find stuff. Let's see if I can find another chest before we come out of this area. There we go. I'll take the rocket and that. Hmm. Kind of thinking that the mutagen's pretty important these days. All right, let, let's get out of here. There's uh, there, there's so much more that we can find, but right now I don't have space or actually the need for it. So I would say that basically concludes uh, our exploration into the northern part of the map. Yeah, that that's pretty much it. We've we've been to the ring. We've been to the little. Well, there's a little desert just to the south of the ring, just after the potholes that we could probably have a look at. Uh, nothing major there, a few chests, but it does mean that uh, we can now spend a bit more time exploring the southern part of the map. And there are two large wrecks in that area, uh, one behind the waterfall and one at the lava biome that we saw in the last episode or the previous one, uh, where we could find obsidian. And then, of course, there's the blue desert. There's another place. There's a big cave system. There's the crater biome. So yeah, still quite a lot to see. Rare lot of inventory full. All right. All right. So I've emptied us. I did pick up a couple of chips. So let's go and decode them. Oh, no more blueprints for now. That's interesting. And my little drop off overflow container is full of stuff as well. Let's uh, use some of those crystals that we found. Um, yeah, that, that was one of them. Tier 3 deconstruct. I have no idea what it's for. But obviously there's something that you can't deconstruct without it. So I'm just going to get it. So it's the purple and the light blue, and that should be it. There we go. Now we got the big one. What else was there? I'm not really interested in the pinning microchips. Uh, I could get mining speed, but it really doesn't matter to me anymore. But the tier three torch, now that sounds interesting. So let's go get a couple of solars. Oh, there's a storm coming. Okay. Nope, just a dust storm. And that's upgraded. So if we put it on now, oh wow, it's like an area light. Compared to that little white spot we had before. 
Oh, and while I'm on the subject of torches, I do apologize. I do sometimes forget to put my torch off and it kind of makes things look blown out and a bit difficult on the video. Apologies. Okay, so finally we can have a look at where we are. All right, we're at 2.39 on pressure. We need 13.3 for the tier three ore extractors. So that's one thing that we've got to work towards. Maybe give uh, pressure a little boost. We'll have to see. Oxygen, uh, water life collectors at 155. We are at 22, so yeah. Oh, we have unlocked the teleporters. Forgot about that. Uh, yeah, the, these are pretty cool. And we do have a bit of pulsar, but I don't really think I want to waste pulsar right now on the teleporters. Might be handy later, but you know, you've got to carry two of them and they use a lot of power. 276 per second each. So that's already over 500 power that you're using just by putting the first two up to travel between two spots. So yeah, just something to, to keep an eye on. I'd rather have the power than than that. Uh, T3 tree spreaders are almost there and I haven't even built a T2 yet. Well, maybe I can skip the T2s, go straight to the T3s. Cool, and then we'll get the osmium rod and fusion energy cell and then the drone station to finalize our automation. That's going to be very nice. That's where we are on the normal terraformation on the biomass. 8.3 kilotons. We are like 10% of the way there. So it's going to be a while. We have a couple more butterflies to unlock before we get to the butterfly farm. So not much we can do there. Insects I kind of need to push because I want to get to farms. And actually, this is going to unlock like very soon the Amora tree seed. And at 1.5 tons of insects, which we are quite, yeah, we were getting to at 1.04 so at 1.5 we unlock the farms so that's going to be excellent as well good yeah we'll we'll slowly increase everything bit by bit well i'm thinking let's put up a trade rocket so what do we need for it three circuit boards oh my gosh look at that imagine i've got some all right super alloy uranium and engine uranium rod in there super alloy rod in there rocket engine and three circuit boards now you're going to be able to pull a lot of circuit boards out of the wreck. So I've only done that one. Uh, there are actually more in that ring. Uh, we'll have to visit it again because if you remember, there was that fusion reactor in there that needed something to be put in. Once that something is put in, it opens other places and boom, you're A for away. All right. And I also need to move these two. But uh, for now, oh, water, water drunk. Let's put up that uh, trading platform. I don't think this will, maybe it will be the final location, but for now, this is where it's going. I, I'm, I think I might move that, but I'm not sure yet. All right, so, trading platform. The way it works is uh, you can put stuff in here and send it off, and you will be given terror tokens. Now, currently I have zero, but you can buy new stuff. So you can buy like cocoa seeds, wheat seeds, Get the blueprint for a cooking station, which you just then need to take to your blueprint screen and unlock. Same with a smart fabric. Customizable sofa, customizable bed. This is for when we've got fabric that uh, we can make smart, smart fabric out of. And then you can buy all the fuses as well. There is a unique tree seed. T2 storage lockers, which are unbelievably cool. So yeah, and, and they all cost quite a bit. Everything costs quite a bit. So you do need to get quite a lot. And... Right now, this is what we can sell. Uh, it's not everything that we can sell because there's a lot of stuff in here that we haven't unlocked yet that, we'll, that we will be able to sell, like pulsars and fusion cells. But if we can automate something here quite easily, then uh, it, should be, it should be easy to start our process of, of earning some terror tokens. Although we will also find them here and there. And I'm not sure if building this actually unlocks the ability to find them. But we'll see. At a later stage, you can actually automate this. So you can have everything being made in your base and tell the drones to, to bring whatever needs to be brought to here. And this will then, you can set it to automatically launch when full. And then you don't have to have only one. You can have as many as you want. So you could go really big if the need is there. Anyway, you can see I've started expanding my platform. Uh, this is where the farms are going to go. So that's going to look quite cool. Oh yeah, while we... Oh, we're about it. Uh, do I break those domes down now? No, I don't. No, they've 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 got a fuse and then they're doing their thing. So I'm going to leave them there. All right, so I'm just going to hop over to this wreck quickly and 
go and grab what we can on the servers. And now we can test our new torch out. Oh, it's so nice. Anyway, we got servers. And we got some more servers. And we've unlocked the Amel butterfly lava. That's nice. Okay, this was quite a small wreck. So there were just those eight servers, as far as I can tell. But it's still, I mean, it's eight circuit boards. So that's a bonus. And we come out at night. See you in the morning. Good morning. Uh, this is what I woke up to. It's raining, it's miserable. So I'm going to go and do stuff in the base. Now we're going to head up to the production area over here. Um, yeah, this might be a mistake, but I'm going to do it anyway. This one will be fertilizer 2. This one will be set up as uh, explosives. This one as plastic. And I'll put a couple more in over here. I think I've spaced them out correctly. And this one, oh, it just fits very nice. Okay, this will be the food. This is pulling beans from over here and honey from over here. The plastic is pulling mushrooms from, from there. Uh, and whatever else it needs from downstairs. This is pulling the sulfur and iridium from downstairs. And good. I've probably run out of algae now. Oh, no, I haven't. What have I run out of? Do I have... I've uh, still got a full container of those. Obviously, there's a shortage of something here. Uh, methane, most likely. And we just unlocked something else. Uh, another flower or tree, I think. Right, go and pick up some methane. Go and dump it in the container. Eventually, this will be automated. Yeah, it takes two methane. Boom, and they immediately disappear. So as long as we keep the containers full, or at least topped up, uh, things will keep producing until the watercrafter storage is semi-full. Yeah, this one down here is going to be, I think, smart fabric, probably. Or maybe it'll be just normal fabric, and I'll put smart fabric downstairs. And then there are a number of different uh, mutagens that I will put down here. And then maybe at the end, uh, the common lava, you can actually make those. So I might put that in there and uh, whatever other secrets the game is holding that I haven't seen yet but there was another thing that I discovered um actually I wonder where I'm gonna put it actually you know what I'm gonna change this no I'm not all right uh there, there was another thing that unlocked and uh it is over here the silk generator and for that we need three silkworms there's zeolite water and oxygen but we need three silkworms so what I'm gonna do Got it. Got enough here to build myself a chest. This is where I'm going to store the silk. And then we can start the process of making silk and fabric. So if we go up to the incubator, what we need here for the silkworms. Bacteria uncommon in fertilizer. Bacteria is no problem. Fertilizer, no problem. And uncommon lava no problem and then we just shove them in here one at a time well eventually we'll have more incubators so we'll be able to do this a little bit faster but the incubators aren't too slow so it's fine oh food level i'll wait for a while this uh high quality food is 90 food so yeah quite a bit all right so i'll make these three i'll get all the other stuff gathered together for the the silk maker and then we'll pop that up all right well we got our first silkworm so I'll load up the second one and i do believe that that finishes our third silkworm i think i have everything else so i'm gonna start off by putting one right in the back corner i honestly don't think it makes a difference on the direction except maybe for the look um yeah there's things over here maybe the drawers that you can pull out with the silk but yeah there we go it's our first silk generator that means that I can come down here and I might move this one later on. It depends on what else I need to do. But I'm going to put... Yeah, I'll put that over there. And it just killed our power. Right, well, uh, Pulsar. Well, I did have a lot of power, but uh, obviously not enough. So uh, I don't need this crate anymore. Oh, there you go. Power's back. Right, and I'm going to set this one to do fabric. 
So right now we're getting a lot of what we need uh, from auto crafters, and we don't have to craft ourselves anymore. And in the previous episode, I mentioned that I'm uh, not terribly fond of uh, the windows in the bio lab because you, know, you walk up to them, you can't really see much uh, looking up. So gathered what I needed, and uh, I'll just stick some windows in. Yeah, so for comparison, this is what you see now, and this is what you used to see. You can decide which is your favorite. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Right, I'm feeling the need to increase pressure a bit more. It's going slowly. Um, so maybe another drill or two? Yeah, maybe just one. Just one. I am looking forward to seeing a pressure fuse at some point. Um, yeah, we, we do have five, so this will be number six. There you go. That'll give us a little bit of extra. Yeah, currently heat is not really a, a problem because we've unlocked everything under heat. It will contribute to the overall uh, terraformation. So I will have to increase heat at some point. But right now, I'm, I'm rather chasing unlocks. So I'll do bit by bit. But we are progressing really well towards the outdoor farm. So it looks like that is something that we're probably going to end up doing in the next episode. Okay, the, the, it's, it's becoming nighttime again. So what I'm going to do, I'll take take the opportunity to do a night flight through to the waterfall biome and really show a couple of chests and maybe a, a golden chest as well so let's go okay i've come through the breach the waterfall's in front of us i'm gonna make a right turn and head up the hill and then onto the top of this uh, flat rock uh, you can see the lava biome over there and if we come over here oh, golden chest and oh some good stuff ah uh, yes Effigy is staying. Yeah, once everything is automated and I have a little bit more time, I'll do the self-aggrandizing things, like putting out my trophies. But yeah, this is, uh, th there's a chest. Oh, yes. Uh, something you'll be interested in seeing, uh, there is a cave down here, and this is called the Mushroom Biome, or the Mushroom Cave, or something like that. But it's all very pink. Cool thing walk around here a bit you may end up bumping into a, a special butterfly lava oh right there there we go futura now if we have a look at it it has an 800 percent insect multiplier so that's quite nice oh and another one very nice so yeah that's an actual butterfly lava we don't have to make the butterfly with uh, with it it is already made we just have to stick it into a butterfly farm or something and it gives us a big boost. But it's not the biggest. Anyway, there's stuff in here that we'll cover. But uh, yeah, not the focus of now. So I'm going to hop out here. I'm going to just run around and collect a few crates. And uh, see what else is interesting in this area. Obviously the most interesting is what's behind that waterfall. Alright, there's some kind of a storm coming. And if it's a meteor shower, they normally come from that side. No, it's not. Alright. So let's just hop over, see if I can find the entrance, I think it's over here, there we go, through the waterfall, and we're in. And it's like its own tiny little biome. And we'll find stuff down here, and in this chest we will find good stuff. So I will grab all of that, and if we come up here... There's all of these little structures that look like crosses. Oh, there's a chest up here, and it's got a whole lot of stuff. So if you decide that you're going to start your campaign in the waterfall biome, it is pretty difficult to find resources. So uh, find this crate. It'll help you get the initial stuff without too much stress. And there's a message. What was supposed to be a fun, relaxing time turned into a nightmare. A five-week space cruise across the lesser-known parts of the universe. Unfortunately, our stupid crew was not able to respond to a seemingly minor incident. And here we are, burying the bodies we were able to retrieve from the burning wreck. What will happen to us now will most certainly be similar. We are heading west. Let's see how long we can survive. I would say a few days at most. Some Sinita 2 survivors, at least for now. The year 3043. So yeah, that was quite a while ago. Ooh. And we've unlocked the tier 3 tree spreader. Here comes a, a big boost in oxygen. Anyway, yeah. So that's that's that. This uh, 
crew and we'll go and check out the ship that they crashed in in the meantime uh let me head back maybe i'll run into a chest on the way back in fact it's quite likely because i'm going to fly directly to one uh zero lot and a chest and i think i already picked that one up doesn't have much in it and i'm pretty sure there's another one not too far away ah yes there we go more good stuff and we're extremely close to another golden chest, but my storage is full, so that'll be for another time. Uh, we're about to add a heck of a lot of plants and oxygen. So uh, what I did was I uh, grabbed an aroma plant, um, and I'm busy making a tree seed. And that will give us a 250% multiplier. I've also collected the materials for a tier 3 tree spreader, and also for a T2 optimizer. Uh, and then in my storage i've picked up an oxygen multiplier fuse a plant multiplier fuse and there is another oxygen multiplier fuse that i'm going to grab on my way to putting all of this together so how close are we we're almost there and we have our uh, what uh, humalora tree seed with a 250 cent multiplier let's go and do this thing right so i'm going to grab this oxygen multiplier out of here because it's really going to be inconsequential there after I put this down. And I think this is going to be the location of a lot of trees. So we'll grab this. We'll put it down over here. We don't have to put these by water, but I'm going to just for this one. I'm going to grab the seed. We're going to put it in. Now, as you can see, it is giving us a fair bit of oxygen. And it's giving us uh, 1.2 kilograms of plants per second. But we're gonna we we're gonna change that up a little bit. So we put this down, and we put the two oxygens and the plants in, and we go back now. Yeah, six point two five kilograms of plants and one oh six. So we're getting a twelve hundred and fifty percent multiplier on the oxygen, and a five hundred percent multiplier on the plants. So that is cool. Let's go and see what that's done to us. Oh my goodness! Look at that. Increase 4.9 million parts per quadrillion per second. And then uh, biomass is increasing at an enormous rate of 355,000. So totally worth it. And that means that soon we will get the water life collector. That's the way off, but it's faster now. And with plants going as quickly as they are now, it shouldn't take too much time for us to get to the butterfly farm. So that's where I'm going to leave it. Quite a lot achieved in this episode. Uh, we got circuit boards, we checked out uh, all the quartzes in the caves, in the rainbow caves. Got another golden chest. Yeah, so no, we, we've, we've done good stuff. We've also put our first tier 3 tree spreader in. And our first tier 2 optimizer, so excellent. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have some changes to do between episodes. If you like this video, give us a like. If you want to see more, subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications. Leave me your comments, let me know how you think this is going. I am not playing the way I'd normally play because I, I want to make sure that you can see what's going on and what helps where. But I'm actually enjoying playing like this. It is very easy once you, you know the, the map and where to find stuff. So I think my next playthrough might be a little bit tougher. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, cheers.